Hello, we're doing Macbeth, Act 2, Scene 2. My name is Zoe Olbert, and I'll be portraying Lady Macbeth. My name is Zane Killian, and I will be portraying Macbeth. That which hath made them drunk hath made me bold. Which hath quenched and hath given me fire. Hark, peace. That was the Isle of Screech, the fatal bell in which gives the sterns good night. He is about it. The doors are open and the serpent and groom do mock their charge with snores. I have drunk a project that death and nature do contend about them, whether they live or die. Who's there? What home? Alack, I'm afraid they have awake and tis not done. The attempt and not the deed confounds us. Hark, I lay their daggers ready. He cannot miss them. Had he not resembled my father as he slept, I had done it. Oh, my husband. I've done the deed. Didst thou not hear a noise? I heard the owl scream, the crickets cry. Did not you speak? When? Now? As I descended? I. Uh, uh, hark, who lies in the second chamber? Dobbing. Oh, this is a sorry sight. A foolish thought to say a sorry sight. One that did laugh in his sleep, and one cried murder that they did wake each other. I stood and heard them, but they did say their prayers and address them again to sleep. They are two lodged together. One cried, God bless us, and amen the other. They see me with these hangman's hands. Oh, listening their fear, I could not say amen when they did say, God bless us. Consider it not so deeply. Wherefore could I not say amen? I had the most needs of blessing. An amen stuck in my throat. These deeds must not be thought after these ways. So, it will make us mad. I heard a voice cry, sleep no more. Macbeth does murder sleep. The innocent sleep, sleep that knits up the raveled sleeve of care, the death of each day's life. Balm of hurt minds, sore labor's bath, chief nourisher in life's feast. What do you mean? Still, it cried, sleep no more to all the house. Lamus hath murdered sleep, and therefore Cawdor shall sleep no more. Macbeth shall sleep no more. Who was it that thus cried? Why were you then? You do amend your noble strength to think so brain sickly of things. Go, get some water and wash this filthy witness from your hands. Why did you bring these daggers back from the place? They must lie there. Go, carry them, and smear the sleeping grooms with blood. I'll go no longer. I am afraid to think of what I have done. Look on it again, I tear not. And for a purpose! Give me the daggers. The sleeping and the dead are but as pictures. Tis the eye of childhood that fears the painted devil. If you do bleed, I'll gild the face of the grooms with ball, for it must be. There! Yes. Whence is thy knocking? How is it with me when every noise appalls me? Oh, what hands are here? Oh, ha, they pluck out mine eyes. Will all great Neptune's ocean wash this blood cleave from my hand? No, this, my hand, will rather the multitudinous seas incarnadine, making the green one red. My hands are of your color, but I shame to wear a heart so white. I hear a knocking from the south entry. 
which higher we draw our chamber, a little water clears of the sea. How easy is it then? Your constancy hath left you unattended. Hark, more knocking. Go get on your ninth gown, and less occasion calls us and shows us to be watchers. Be not to lost so poorly in your thoughts. No, my deed, to rest not know myself. But wait, Duncan, with thy knocking. Hey, would thou couldst.